good day to these and welcome to your new unit. We're talking today about polynomials and our goal, I know what a polynomial is and I can classify it by degree and number of terms. So most of this lesson is going to be going through a bunch of terminology just so that you understand um, what is meant by a polynomial. So a monomial is the product of a number, which is always a coefficient, uh, and one or more variables. So I can have three. Uh, that's actually a monomial, but more than a monomial, it's a constant term because it has no variables with it. So that could be considered a monomial. Most of the time, you're going to see something that looks like this, 3x. That's a monomial. Or 3xy is a monomial. And of course, we know that the operation between all of these things, this means 3 times x times y when we write it that way. And we could have more than one y. We could have 3xy squared. That's still a monomial because all of these, all of the things that's written there are all linked by multiplication. Um, and that's where this product, that word product comes from. It's linked by multiplication. Now, when uh, more than one monomial is linked by addition or subtraction. It becomes a polynomial, and each of the monomials are now actually called terms. So I could have a constant, uh, and if I link it by addition or subtraction to some other monomial, this is now a polynomial, and I could add more on there. I could um, have 30y squared z's. Okay, um, this is still a polynomial and the terms, the individual terms here, 3 is an individual term, 2x is an individual term, and 30y squared z is an individual term, and we know those are terms and not just part of a monomial because of these addition and subtraction in there. For it to be part of the monomial, they have to be linked by multiplication. So once you get these addition and subtraction things in there, then we know we're entering into polynomial territory. Now, polynomials are classified in two ways. First, by the number of terms. So one term we've already dealt with. One term like 2x cubed, that's one term. Um, that is a monomial. If I link another term onto that, just one more term, say I have 2x cubed, and I link a minus 5. And that's another term. It's called a constant term because it doesn't have a variable with it. But now that I have two of them, uh, the prefix for two things is bi, like bi cycle. So this is a binomial. And then if I add one more, three terms, say I have 2x cubed and I want to put uh, an x squared with it, and then I still have that minus 5, the constant term on the end. Uh, now I have three terms. I have 1, 2, 3. They're all separated by pluses and minuses. Um, this now has three terms. What do you call a cycle that has three wheels? That's a tri-cycle, so this is a trinomial. Anything more than that, and we don't give it any kind of name, we just say it's a four-term polynomial or a five-term polynomial. Now, the other way we can classify it is by degree. And what we mean by degree, um, the degree of a term is the sum of the exponents of the variable. So, for instance, this one down here, if I want to know what the degree of that term is or that monomial, I have to add up all the exponents. So there's two x's, three y's, and even though it's not written there, there's one z. So I have to do two plus three plus one. So that's six. This is degree six because I have two x's, three y's, and one z. So two plus three plus one is six. So the degree of that term is six. Now, the degree of a polynomial is the biggest degree of the terms. So, for instance, if I take a look at these ones, this term has a 2, a 3, and a 1, so that term is degree 6. This term only has two x's. It doesn't have anything else, so it's degree 2. This one here has 2, 1, and 6, so that's 9. 
So it's degree 9. And so if I look at the polynomial as a whole, if I put those terms together and I just say, what's the degree of the polynomial? I have to pick the biggest one of its terms. I don't add these ones together. You don't add them up. The degree of this polynomial is simply 9. Okay, so you add them up for each individual term, but when it comes to the whole thing, you just take the biggest. Now, most of the time, we're not going to be dealing with polynomials that look this funny. Most of the time, our polynomials are just going to have an x in them. And so we're going to look at some of the common things here. Um, and these are more of the common things. Notice they all only have x's in them. So that's mostly what we're going to be looking at. Um, the first one, this polynomial, it's 5. How many terms is there? Well, there's only one thing there. And so classification by number of terms we've already talked about. This is a monomial. Now by degree, this doesn't have any exponents at all because it doesn't have any variables. So we call it degree zero. And anything that doesn't have any variables or is degree zero, it is classified as a constant. Now the next one, it's still a monomial. There's still only one term there, which makes it a monomial. But now it actually has an exponent there. It's not written on there, but we understand that there's a 1 there. So this is degree 1. And anything of degree 1, if I graphed this, if I put a y here and turned it into a, a, a picture that I could find um, points for, that would be a line. So degree 1 is called linear. Now this is two terms. We know it's two terms now because this plus sign shows up and it splits up these two things. So I've got two different terms separated by plus. So that is now a binomial. And the biggest degree, this term here has degree 0, but this term here has degree 1. And remember, we have to take the largest of them. So the whole degree is degree 1 and it's linear. Now the next one, this term here has degree 2, and this term here has degree 0. So the biggest is degree 2. It does still have two terms, which makes it a binomial. But now that it's degree 2, I'm going to introduce you to a new word. We call it quadratic. Now, some people get a little confused here because quad usually means 4, but in this case, degree 2 is called quadratic. Now, over here, I've got three terms, 1, 2, 3 terms, all separated by those pluses and minuses. So this is a three-term polynomial, and that makes it a trinomial. And if you take a look, this is degree 2, degree 1, degree 0. It is still a degree 2 because we got to take the biggest one, remember. So it's degree 2, which means that it's quadratic. Now, lastly, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. Now, when we have 4-term polynomial, we don't give it any special name. We just call it a 4-term poly polynomial. Now notice that this has degree 3, this has degree 2, degree 1, degree 0, and we have to take the biggest, so this whole polynomial has degree 3, and things that have exponent 3, well an exponent of 3 is called a cube, so this is called cubic. Now, note, it is proper math form to put the terms of a polynomial in descending powers of x. So that's what I did up here. I put it in descending powers of x, which means that I start with the biggest exponent and I work my way down to no variable at all, which means that the exponent on there would have been 0. So now, we've already recapped these in an, at an earlier time, but I'm going to do these again. Uh, adding polynomials, here's the rule. Remove the brackets and collect like terms. So if I remove the brackets, I get 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 plus 4x squared minus 6x plus 8. 
I just have to take the brackets off. Now, collecting like terms, remember, for two terms to be like, they have to have the same variable with the same exponent. So those two are like, uh, which gives me, and, I, and to put them together, I just have to add them. So if I have 2x squareds and 4x squareds, together I have 6x squareds. Now I've got this plus 3. Oopsie, 6x squared. Now I have uh, this plus 3x and a negative 6x. They have the same variables, so they are like terms, but if I put a positive 3 with a negative 6, we get some cancelling going on. Now there's more negatives, so the negatives are going to win. So this is going to be negative 3x. And lastly, I have the minus 4 and the plus 8. And if I put minus 4 with a plus 8, the positives are going to win, so I get plus 4 left over. Now, subtracting polynomials, the rule here is to remove the bracket by multiplying the negative 1 through the second bracket, then collect like terms. So we can think of this as being a minus 1, and we multiply that minus 1 through the second brackets. Now, all that's going to do is change the signs. So when I remove those brackets, I take these ones off, nothing happens because there's no minus in front of these brackets. But this minus here acts like a minus 1 that has to go through the brackets. So that's going to be minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 8. And now we have to collect like terms. So I'm going to try and go through this fairly quickly. 2x squared and negative 4x squared gives us a negative 2x squared. The positive 3x and the positive 6x give us a positive 9x. And the negative 3, or sorry, the negative 4 and the negative 8 give us negative 12. The next thing we're going to review, multiplying monomials. Multiply coefficients and add exponents on the like variables. That's the plain up rule. Uh, remember that... Um, I can multiply in any order I want. So this is just all multiplications. I have two multiplied by x and an x, and a y and a y and a y, and a negative 5, then an x, then a y, a y, a y, and a y, and a z. And they're just all multiplied together. And order of operations tells me I can multiply in any order I want. So this is the order I want. I want to multiply 2 and negative 5 together. Then I want to multiply x squared and x together. Then I want to multiply y cubed and y to the fourth together. And then that z has nothing to go with it. And so if I do that, and you don't have to put this step in here, but I get negative 10 and an x squared times an x means I have three x's multiplied together, so that's x cubed. A y cubed and a y to the fourth multiplied together means I have seven x's all multiplied together. So that gives me y to the seventh, and then I just have a z on the end. So what you really do is you just add the exponents. And remember that even though it's not written here, there is actually an exponent of 1 on both of those terms, although the z, we don't need to put that there. That's not usually something that we'll see. So carrying on. Uh, dividing monomials. This is kind of the same. Uh, as before, and I'm not going to do it, I'm going to do it fairly quickly. Uh, instead of multiplying the coefficients and adding, like we did when we were multiplying, um, when we're dividing, we're going to divide the coefficients and subtract. So if we look here, 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6, and then these 5x's are going to divide away 5 of these x's, so I'm going to be left with x to the 6th. And these four y's are going to divide away those four y's, so there's no y's left at all. And that z doesn't get divided by anything, so it's just a z. And so the rule is divide coefficients and subtract exponents on the like variables. And expanding and simplifying. So we have, we have to use the distributive law for this one. And there's two places. Think of it as being one session of distributive law and another session of distributive law. So this 4x has to go through the brackets. And that 5 whoop, has to go through the brackets. And be careful with your signs. 
So when this 4x goes through, I get 4 times 2 is 8, and then x times x squared is x cubed. And then 4 times 3 is 12, and x times x is x squared. Now I'm going to be careful with the sign because everything gets multiplied by negative 5. So negative 5 times positive 2 is negative 10, and then I have that x squared. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, and then I get that x. And negative 5 times positive 7 is negative 35. And now we just have to collect up like terms. I got an x cubed that doesn't go with anything, so it's going to stay out front as 8x cubed. I've got an x squared and another x squared, so those will go together, and positive 12 and negative 10 make negative 2x, or positive 2x squared. And then there's nothing else to go together. I've got 25x's and negative 35. And notice that I put this in descending order. I put the cubes first, then the squareds, then there's an understood one here, even though we didn't write it, and then there would be an x to the 0 here, because anything to the exponent 0 is 1, remember? But when we multiply by 1, it doesn't change anything. So we leave it as that cube squared, x to the 1, x to the 0 is what those are. In descending powers, we're going down. So, when I pull it out here, multiply any term in front of a bracket with all terms inside the bracket. Use rules for multiplying monomials and collect like terms. Now, the last thing that I want to go over with you is evaluate. And this is pretty straightforward. If x equals negative 2 and y equals 5, evaluate 2x minus 3y squared. That just means plug those numbers in. So, 2x... I've got two x's, and I know x is negative 2, minus 3 times x, which is negative 2, times y, which is 5. And that 5 is squared. Now, remember your order of operations. And we can evaluate each term individually um, all in one line. So I can do that 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then I can do this multiplication, which was going to give me plus 6, and it is going to be multiplied by 25, because I have to do 5 squared before I multiply the 6 in there. So that's going to give me negative 4 uh, plus 150 is ne uh, positive 146, and you don't need that positive there. So 146. And so the rule for this one, plug values given into x and y, then use bedmas to simplify. So remember I did order of operations, I had to do exponents, and then I do multiplication, addition, subtraction. Yeah. Um, so there, that concludes it for today.